uh, real quickly, win, lose, or draw in this election, will you commit here today for a peaceful transferal of power after the election? And there has been rioting in Louisville. There's been rioting in many cities across this country, red and your so-called red and blue states. Will you commit to making sure that there is a peaceful transferal of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. I and, understand that, but and, people are rioting. Do you commit uh, to making know, sure that there's a no, peaceful wanna, transferal of power? We want to have get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very trans. We'll have a very peaceful. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. Uh, the ballots are out of control. You know it. And you know who knows it better than anybody else? The Democrats know it better than anybody else. He's not going to be removed. He's not going to be removed. He's not going to be removed. You feel confident in that? Uh, not by me. My, my, my 357 Magnum is comfortable with that. End of story. And they re remove him in the Senate? Mm -hmm. I think it would cause physical violence in this country that we haven't seen since the, second, since the first civil war. I think it will become the second civil war. But what matters to him is re-election, and it's becoming desperate. I believe he is afraid for all his bluster and bravado. He's a terrified man. He knows the consequences if he loses in 2020. He knows because he knows far better than you and I know, far better than Robert Mueller knew what he actually what his exposure is, what his criminal exposure is. Just today, documents are transferred from Deutsche Bank. Bank. This is going to go on for some time, and I, I genuinely believe that this is a president who does not care about this country. It's Trump first. It's not America first. It's make Trump greater, not make America great again. And I do believe he will do everything he can to prevent our government from stepping in and, and blocking Russian attempts to disrupt and influence the election. I would think that there would be a strong movement. It would be very negative. Possible violence. Not that I'm condoning violence. There'll be a lot of mad Americans. Possibly 70, 80,000, 70, 80 million Americans on the loose, not very happy. Uh, what we're seeing is a divided country. You know, both sides are dug in. No one's budging. So in a moment, I'm going to talk to a friend of the beat and Art of the Deal co-author Tony Schwartz. But first, Biden's remarks come amid outrage over absurdly long voting lines in Georgia. And critics point to the Trump administration's sustained attack on democratic norms in this country from claiming there were up to 5 million illegal votes in 2016. That was not true. That was false. To asking for dirt on Joe Biden from the Ukrainian government to Trump's son-in-law at one point declining to rule out delaying the 2020 election if they needed to. Now, the other issue, if Trump loses, would he try to cling on to power any way possible? Here's Biden. This is a strange question to ask an American politician. Have you ever considered what would happen if the election result came out as you being the winner and Trump refused to leave? Yes, I have. And you have so many rank-and-file military personnel saying, whoa, we're not a military state. This is not who we are. I promise you, I'm absolutely convinced they will escort him from the White House in a, in a, with great dispatch. I, uh, yesterday, I talked to Paul Krugman on, on the program, and one of the things he had written, and he talked about it last night in the program, uh, was saying that he believes we may not have a functioning democracy in 2020 um, if the president wins again. Essentially, America, as we know it, uh, is under threat. And, and one of the things I, I asked him, you know, uh, he said, if you're not scared, you're, you're not paying attention. Well, I don't think you're going to have to wait to see some of Trump's maliciousness. He's already doing tremendous damage, abetted, by the way, by the Senate Republicans who are amazingly undercutting their own institution and its powers for very short term gain. But Trump, yes, if Trump wins, he'll do great damage. But if he loses the election, he is going to call upon his supporters for violence. There's not going to be a civil war. That's idiocy. But you will see at least isolated violence on the part of crackpot supporters. He will be clinging to the doors of the White House, giving orders to everybody on all sides that the, the honest people will not obey, the career employees will not obey, the military certainly won't obey. 
Joining me now for our State of the Mind franchise, Tony Schwartz, co-author of Art of the Deal and CEO of the Energy Project. He's just published an article for Medium about the dangers of Trump during a time of crisis. Uh, Mr. Schwartz, it's great to have you with us. I have to say, I mean, just hearing that as somebody who has covered so many countries, authoritarian countries overseas, where the issue of peaceful transfer of power is distinctly and uniquely American, do you think Biden's warning about Trump trying to steal the election and the fact that he may not even leave office if he does lose are justified? A hundred percent. He's, uh, you know, he is, as I've written in, in on Medium, he is a psychopath, meaning he is li- missing the two ingredients that are critical and common for human beings. Number one, conscience, and number two, empathy. So he lacks both of these qualities, and therefore, anything goes for Trump. And think about this. The minute he leaves office, his life, for all practical purposes, from his perspective, is over. Because at a minimum, he loses the vast percentage of his power and his ability to dominate. And believe me, he's gotten used to that, and giving it up is unthinkable. I wanted to go back to that moment a little bit because I don't think a lot of us just understand what that moment would mean for this country if there isn't a peaceful transfer uh, of power. And as Joe Biden, I think the alarming thing in that interview is he answered that question seriously. That was a serious question from Trevor Noah. And Joe Biden answered it seriously that it would be the military who would perhaps have to act and dispatch him from that office. Well, I think that's what it will come down to. And then the question is, On whose side does the military stand? Does it stand on the side of democracy or does it stand on the side of the commander in chief, even if uh, those circumstances suggest he should no longer be the commander of the chief? And I'm not in any way confident in what that outcome will be, but uh, I have no doubt that Trump is going to do everything he possibly can, including the recruitment of Vladimir Putin, which he hardly needs to do. Putin wants to end democracy in the United States. He will do everything he can, exactly as Biden says, to try to steal this election. If Donald Trump loses his reelection bid and refuses to do a peaceful transfer of power to Joe Biden, what will the military do? That's a big question that's been coming up a lot lately, especially after Trump gave wishy-washy answers about whether or not he would accept defeat if that was the outcome of the general election. Now there are two veterans who have addressed this issue in an open letter to the Joint Chiefs of Staff General Mark Milley. And I wanna read you some excerpts from it because it does give you a sense of how real this fear is and these, Veterans certainly do want to make sure that there's a plan in place to ensure that Donald Trump stepped down. So John Nagel, John Nagel, and retired Army officer Paul Yingling, a retired U.S. Army lieutenant colonel, penned an open letter to Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff Mark Milley, warning him that President Donald Trump might refuse to leave office in November and that the U.S. military must be prepared to remove him. So part of the letter reads: the once unthinkable scenario of authoritarian rule in the United States is now a very real possibility. The President of the United States is actively subverting our electoral system, threatening to remain in office in defiance of our Constitution. In a few months time, you may have to choose between defying a lawless president or betraying your constitutional oath. They continue to write that if Donald Trump refuses to leave office at the expiration of his constitutional term, the United States military must remove him by force and you must give that order. And you will absolutely, sir, that you will absolutely accept the result of this election. I will look at it at the time. I'm not looking at anything now, I'll look at it at the time. I would like to promise and pledge to all of my voters and supporters, and to all of the people of the United States that I will totally accept the results of this great and historic presidential election if I win. I don't lose too often. I don't like to lose. But are you gracious? You don't know until you see. It depends. I think mail-in voting is is going to rig the election. I really do. 
Uh, Are you suggesting that you might not accept the results of the election? I have to see. Can you give a, can you give a direct answer? You will accept the election. I have to see. Look, you. I have to see. No, I'm not going to just say yes. I'm not going to say no. And I didn't last time either. You told Fox News recently that you couldn't say whether you'd accept the results of the 2020 election. Hillary like Clinton it. never accepted. She, she conceded on. She conceded on. Doesn't accept. And one final part of this letter that I want to share with you all, because this was the part that. I think concern me the most because we've seen a little taste of it. They write that Trump is assembling a private army capable of thwarting not only the will of the electorate, but also the capacities of ordinary law enforcement. When these forces collide on January 20th, 2021, the US military will be the only institution capable of upholding our constitutional order. So what they're referring to there is how Trump has used federal agents against civilians. We certainly saw that happening in Portland. And it, it is terrifying when you consider that these people certainly did play ball. They took the orders from Trump and they were absolutely vicious against many peaceful protesters. There were instances of people who were essentially dragged into unmarked cars by federal agents who hadn't identified themselves. It was terrifying and and I don't put it past Donald Trump to use anything and everything in his you know, toolbox to try to stay in power. That's why I was so shocked when Jenk really thought that, that Trump would step down. He's not gonna step down.